I put together a Sherwin-Williams color palette featuring this color, Woven Wicker. And I gotta tell you, this is one of my favorite palette pyramids thus far, gotta say. We recently reviewed Woven Wicker on an episode of Hue Review, which I'll leave up in the cards up top and in the description down below. Your choice where you wanna see it. But this video is all about the colors that go well with it. And of course, we like to arrange colors in pyramid fashion, starting with the main color up top, which is kind of your default choice, your supporting colors in the middle that help elevate that main color, and then the finishing colors down the bottom are your accent choices. We also did a dedicated review explaining this whole process, if you want to check that out, in the cards up top too. But for now, let's get right into this episode of Palette Pyramids. Now, why don't we start with the color in the title of this video, Woven Wicker. Where would I put Woven Wicker on this palette pyramid? Where does it go? I think in a lot of cases, probably in most cases, this is going to be a finishing color. This is an accent color to me because of the level of saturation that's happening here. Even though some people might call it kind of neutral leaning because it has this tan like feeling to it. It has enough of that orange, golden, brown, honey mustard type of feeling to it that would push it into that finishing color territory. Doesn't mean you can't use it as a room color, but I definitely see this excelling as a bit of a standout color and not necessarily on the walls too. This could also be used on furniture and accessories easily. There's enough colors that have this sort of harvest gold like coloration that I really do enjoy. <laughs> now we might as well just continue along with the other finishing colors. The next one would be blustery sky. So kind of a chilled out blue that does feel a little bit dusty to me just based on the gray that's in it. Not quite a navy blue. It doesn't have the same level of richness. And I also feel there's just a bit of a yellow undertone to sort of give it a liveliness to it, an aquatic feel rather than something that's more purple leaning or more of a denim blue as I like to describe it. Very aquatic and just goes hand in hand with Woven Wicker. They have this really lovely relationship together, but also as an alternative color. So you can kind of switch one out or the other and have a very different feel, but still be cohesive with the other colors we'll talk about in a little bit. And of course I'm referring to that main color that sort of ties things all together. But before we get there, let's talk about our third finishing color, which is Vogue Green. Vogue, Vogue, Vogue. I don't know how to Vogue. I really do want to learn though. Like I see all the cool drag queens doing their thing. Aqualands, you own everything. Love it. <laughs> now Vogue Green is the darkest color on this pyramid. It is a nine LRV color. It only reflects 9% of the light that hits it, which is not a lot at all. But what you have here is an extremely timeless green extremely memorable, familiar. It has a lot of saturation to it and it just brings an organic grounding, anchoring feel to this palette. And it also fulfills my need to have at least one really dark color for the spaces that need a little bit of drama, a little bit of moodiness. So I really enjoy this color. And if you have the sufficient lighting to help kind of propel it forward, I think it's an awesome choice in a lot of spaces, believe it or not. Okay, so the finishing colors are done. Those are your accent colors and don't think you need to use all of them. You can kind of pick one or two that really work best for you. Your support colors, I think you will want to use, starting with white tail as your first one. This is going to be my off-white of the whole bunch. Probably gonna be an awesome choice for things like baseboards and doors and frames. It has an 86 LRV. It's a beautiful crisp white with a little bit of this creamy yellow warmth. And I think that works really well, clearly with Woven Wicker, but the other colors, even Blustery Sky, there's that little touch of warmth hiding somewhere that'll really connect everything together in a beautiful way, but white tail as a paint color will read as white. The yellow will be pretty subtle in practical use with these colors because there's just a lot of saturation going on. So it'll finish things off really, really nicely. But if you needed a secondary color that had more richness, that was maybe more of a mid-tone neutral for those spaces where the main color is a bit too light, because it is, spoiler alert, Malabar would be my second supporting color. This is going to be a 53 LRV neutral, kind of a sandy sort of beigey color, a little bit of gray mixed in as well. It has some similarities to Woven Wicker in terms of its undertones, but obviously this color doesn't have the same level of intensity with that orange undertone and that gold aspect that Woven Wicker has. So this one's a little more mellowed out, which is awesome because it sort of bridges the gap between Woven Wicker and then the main color up top, which we'll get to in a second. Great choice for the rooms that really require some depth on the walls without looking too dramatic, too attention grabbing. Malabar is still pretty chill. It's gonna hide in the background really well and just act as a neutral canvas color while still having some 
some depth and some richness to it. Okay, so what is the main color? What is the color that you're probably gonna use the most in this whole palette? The color that's gonna connect all the dots throughout your home? Well, before we do that, I wanna let you know that you can get your own custom color palette pyramids from me, from our team. Link in the description down below if you want more information. We offer three different levels or sizes of palettes, whether it's a six color palette like the ones in this video, three color palettes if you're just doing maybe one room, and then our nine color palettes for those larger projects for whole houses, or if you just want nine colors to sort of keep in your back pocket for maybe next year, if you wanna just switch things up and change out one of your accent colors, well, guess what? You'll have a bunch of them to work with. So link in the description down below if you want that. It's essentially our alternative to online color consultations, and I think you'll really enjoy the service. What is the main color? The pinnacle of this palette pyramid, this is the color that is going to tie everything together. You can honestly use this color throughout your entire home if you wanted to. It has that level of versatility. It's going to be able to work in any number of rooms and spaces, and it's one that I really enjoy. It is called Warm Winter. This is part of the Emerald Designer Edition colors, which I think are really awesome. And what I love about this color is I would kind of call it a green age. And if you know me, if you're a subscriber or a member or a Patreon member, you know I love me some green and beige and a bit of gray mixed together. And that's what this color is. I absolutely love it. It works so well with the other colors. It even complements Malabar a little bit where Malabar looks a little more brown leaning next to it. I think it's nice. You can have kind of this little back and forth without being so monochromatic. And that's kind of why I picked it. I think it's awesome. Here's the palette pyramid altogether. Please let me know what you think. And for another Sherwin-Williams pyramid, we got one right over here.